There are so many beliefs around executive functioning that are just wrong. This is super misleading for parents, super confusing for parents, but the worst part is that these myths can really get in the way of parents just like you that are trying to get support for their kids' executive functioning skills. We are going to debunk the most common executive functioning myths that I hear over and over in this video. Before I get started with the myths, I do want to say that I feel like the topic of executive functioning skills has become more of a household word, especially like in the last 10 to 15 years. With that, there's so much information and I'm really happy about that because that means more and more people are learning how impactful working on executive functioning skills are. But along with the good information, there's a couple of bad information that we're gonna navigate through right now. So the first executive functioning myth that is just wrong is that executive functioning skills only affect people that have ADHD or official diagnosis of ADD. That is just wrong. While we can't say that people with an ADHD diagnosis will usually struggle with executive functioning skills, Actually, people with an ADHD diagnosis, usually when you go to the neurologist, the psychiatrist, they will um, usually try and start with medication. If you ask enough, they will say, if you ask enough, is there anything else we can try? They will maybe say, you can try executive functioning skills, coaching to see if it helps with their ADHD symptoms. That's how closely tied they are. However, all of us have a set of executive functioning skills that show up every day at home, on the playground, at work, as adults, as kids. So we all have our executive functioning profile and it's as unique as a snowflake, as unique as a fingerprint, which means helping uh, an individual with executive functioning struggles, the strategies have to be really specific and explicit for that one individual because remember, they have a whole profile that shows up in their everyday life. And most people, there are some commonalities, but most people do not have the same executive functioning skills profile. My executive functioning skills guide actually is a quick way for you to look and see what your executive functioning skill profile is and what your child's executive functioning skills profile is. So myth number two is there is no executive functioning disorder diagnosis. Um, to diagnose, usually it's described in the DSM manual, um, there is no executive functioning disorder in this uh, manual that professionals use to diagnose. However, that does not mean that executive functioning skills, struggles do not trickle into every aspect of your life. They interfere with your child's finding their shoes, they interfere with losing water bottles, they interfere with academics and friendships. So just because there's not a diagnosis, doesn't mean that it doesn't really mess with your child and teen and your family. Third myth is executive functioning skills develop the same for everybody. So many times I'll be like, oh, what executive functioning skills should a four-year-old do? And while there are some commonalities as to what skills develop at what age, it's not really executive function skills, it's more like what can a four-year-old do? They do not develop in a linear fashion for everybody. They're not sequential, right? So we can't say that, you know, working memory shows about six months, so it's the first one to completely develop. Um, we can't say that organization, you know, shows up at, you know, six years old and it's done. Because with executive functioning skills, they develop through the years, through experiences, through opportunities that you know humans have. And um, they can develop all the way through the age of 25, 28. Executive functioning skills are a life sentence. If you have executive functioning skills struggles, you will continue to have struggles forever. And there's not really much you can do because it is what it is, right? It's like a fingerprint, a footprint, you can't really change it. I'm gonna refer you back to myth number Three doesn't develop the same for everybody, but they do develop all the way through to age 25. If you have any learning difference, it can be all the way up to age 28. So when we're looking at um, executive functioning as being, you know, a life sentence and they don't get any better, that's just wrong because they develop. 
and we, the awesome adults in the room, can really pull the right lever and bring in the right strategies and experiences so that our kids' executive functioning skills get better and better and better. And then life gets easier, which is what we really want, right? So this last myth goes back to uh, our myth number three, right? So executive functioning skills, since they develop, they should just get better on their own. Like I wouldn't have to do anything because they have till they're 25, 28 for them to improve on this. Uh, no. What happens many times is that the executive functioning skills do not develop, but all the other ones do. Okay. So what happens is that this one stay, you know, there one area will not develop because the other ones kind of take over. However, a lot of times that leaves us with a bigger and bigger gap. So it may not show up so much when they're in elementary school, but when they get to high school, let's say it shows up. Sometimes executive functioning skills differences don't show up until college and that's when the wheels fall off the bus. Because remember, there's two things we do to support executive functioning skills. We have our environment that helps us, right? And we can also change our environment to support us. And then we actually work on the skill specifically. So for example, um, you know, task initiation, organization, managing, you know, time awareness, that happens naturally in our environment, you know, our school day, our routines, after school, all of those things happen. And when you get to college, you do not have any of those supports in place. So many times college students really struggle because they've been really counting on the environment to hold their executive functioning skills together. And when the environment totally changes in college, the wheels fall off the bus. So knowing what your child's executive functioning skills profile is from an early age really helps you, um, the parent, be in control and, and in, not in control of your child, but really helps you be more aware of what activities, strategies, and supports you wanna give your child to make sure that they develop all the executive functioning skills that they're gonna to need to have a happy, purposeful life. So this is why knowing your child's executive functioning strengths really comes into play. And my next video does a deep dive into that executive functioning profile that I talked about and why executive functioning skills strengths is a game changer for helping you parent your child.